Hi again, my name is Leo Sanger and I'm a senior at Harvard College studying Applied Math and Economics. I wanted to create this video to give you a sense of what the Applied Math major is like at Harvard, the kinds of career options and paths that you might expect, and generally to explain what pursuing quantitative social science is like at Harvard. I'll start by explaining why I was drawn to Applied Math and Economics. I'll talk a bit about my experiences within the major thus far, and I'll finally conclude by talking about my future plans, and the kinds of opportunities that graduates from within the program are able to pursue. When I was in high school, I loved philosophy as a way of explaining and understanding parts of our society. But as I learned more statistics and mathematics, I was unsatisfied with the lack of quantitative rigor from within those fields. And I turned to economics as a way to study the kinds of problems that I was really interested in. In particular, I remember when I was in high school, I took this class at the local university on development economics. I learned just how large of an impact some really small differences in growth and prosperity can have on people's lives. Once you learn just how much these kinds of targeted interventions can improve people's standards of living, it's really difficult to think about anything else. At the same time, I took a couple of classes within econometrics and the statistics department, which helped further confirm to me that I really enjoyed this kind of quantitative, targeted social science approach to solving problems. Going into Harvard, I at first, of course, considered studying economics, but I found that the kinds of course offerings that were available for undergraduates weren't as quantitative as I wanted, and that I would be able to get credit for many of the courses I wanted to take within the economics department by just studying applied mathematics instead. This is really the core reason why I chose applied math over economics. Nearly everything I wanted to learn about, be it urbanism and maps or machine learning and causal diagrams, fell underneath its purview. So it gave me a lot of flexibility and timing and specific course selection, more so than I would have had within the economics concentration. On the other hand, the economics concentration is quite a bit more structured and it offers a lot more community than applied math where students are pursuing more disparate interests. So there's a definite trade-off when it comes to the two options, which I'll also discuss in a little bit. In high school, I didn't study math beyond a little multivariable calculus. So I took the first semester to brush up on that and then was able to dive into more advanced coursework. My relative lack of math experience compared to my peers was something that I was worried about when I first decided to study applied math. Some people entered college having already taken courses in linear algebra and even more, but you really don't need to come in with such a strong high school background in order to make the courses manageable. For example, I was able to get an intro to proofs class to account for one of my requirements since I started at the more introductory level of the math sequence. Since you decide on your concentration at the start of your sophomore year, there's also plenty of time to decide if you'd rather switch back to economics in the future. And it's a great way to ease into harder course offerings available within the math department, either way. On the other hand, if you do have a lot of math experience that you take from high school, department is really great and accommodating of that type of background as well. They really meet you where you are. The requirements are just six to eight math classes, of which four have to be upper division classes that draw from different categories within mathematics, such as discrete math, computation, or analysis. Next, you just take four application classes in economics or whatever other field you decide to focus on, like biology or history. Like most departments at Harvard, there are no specific prerequisites from the majority of classes that you need to fulfill before taking them. You just really take what you feel like you're ready for. This added flexibility within course selections is something I really appreciate about Harvard and I think holds true in general for their ethos and approach towards course selection, which errs on the side of letting students take difficult and more graduate level classes as they feel like they're ready for them. To give an example, many of my friends have taken graduate level classes like the first year microeconomic sequence that's offered in the graduate economics department, which is obviously a great preparation for things like PhD programs or other fields. Alternatively, there's also a great ability to take classes um, at schools like MIT, which can count towards the concentration, as well as in, such as a new course that I took on machine learning and causal inference that I was able to do last spring. In general, actually all courses at MIT are available to Harvard undergraduates, so there's a great opportunity to take advantage of the slightly different learning style that they employ um, over there. For example, the economics undergraduate department at MIT is also quite a bit smaller than that at Harvard, so class sizes are more intimate as well, which can be another advantage, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. This kind of flexibility within course selection can be a bit of a double-edged sword though. For example, I didn't get to receive any kind of AP or IB credit from coursework or exams that I took in high school, nor for any of the classes that I took later on at the local university, unless you decide to choose to pursue a fourth year master's degree, which requires a much more strenuous schedule, more graduate classes. No AP classes can count towards your degree requirements. They can occasionally allow substituting one class for um, an easier class for a harder one, but alone they generally won't 
themselves fulfill a class that you would otherwise have to take, and they don't count towards the general requirements for graduation at the college. One thing that the flexibility of applied math allowed me to do was to be able to focus on smaller, more specialized courses. For example, I was able to, although I took large lecture classes for intermediate micro and macroeconomics, the majority of my course offerings within the economics department were within small classes capped at around 30 students. As opposed to the economics concentration, where you have to take a larger required econometric sequence, I was able to take a smaller class in econometrics at MIT with a Nobel laureate professor with just 40 or so students, which is a really special and memorable experience. In fact, since junior year, nearly all of my classes have had just 18 or so students and have been more of a seminar. We read and discuss papers and work on our own original term papers for the class. I've taken tutorials in the economics department on topics from the behavioral economics of developing countries to secular stagnation with professors like Larry Summers and more, and gotten the chance to develop great relationships with many of these professors, despite not being an official economics concentrator per se. I think relative to friends at other schools, um, professors at Harvard are really open to working with undergraduates on whatever kinds of projects or ideas that you might really be interested in pursuing, and they're really happy to get you involved within their own work as a research assistant. There are also lots of great opportunities to work within larger labs and more formal opportunities, like Raj Chetty's Opportunity Insights team or J. Paul at MIT, for those who prefer a more structured experience. Those kinds of jobs offer a lot of options to talk to current graduate students and work more directly with them as well, which can help you learn about graduate school and can be helpful for many students. In general, as a role, these kinds of larger labs at Harvard and MIT are open for undergrads. I have friends who worked at the Sensible City Lab or the Media Lab, which is a really cool building um, at MIT <laughs> as well. For myself, I was able to get involved as a research assistant for different faculty since the spring of my freshman year. Aside from being a great way to make a little bit of extra money on the side, it gave me a lot of invaluable research skills that I was able to put to use both in internships and in my own thesis and term papers. At first, I felt really intimidated competing for positions with graduate students, since Harvard, of course, has a strong graduate program within economics. Although I quickly learned that wasn't really the case. Professors are really very approachable and they want to find ways for you to work with them. Developed great mentoring relationships with faculty in the department over the past few years, including with my now thesis advisor, who I worked for as an RA, a research assistant for around a year and a half. In terms of more formal work and internship experience, I worked my first couple of summers doing research assistant work, both at the Japanese government's Ministry for Economy, Trade and Industry, the US Economic Census, and the Board of Governors at the Federal Reserve, specifically the International Financial Stability Division, all of which helped me sharpen my statistical programming skills, as well as broaden my toolkit about ways of thinking about economic puzzles. Although my work spanned a broad range of very different topics, throughout these summer experiences within these agencies, I got a better understanding of how to craft pieces around the kinds of problems I wanted to address within the scope of these agencies and these specific stakeholder ways of thinking, which I think the coursework within Applied Math prepares you really well for, even if you might be explaining the same policy to officials at the Federal Reserve and the Census Bureau, they'll take it in very different directions and interpret it very differently given the perspective of their respective agencies. I think this kind of breadth of different experiences and approaches to problems is one of my favorite things about pursuing applied math and economics in general at Harvard. It's really very interdisciplinary by nature. Researchers draw on works from anthropology, evolutionary biology, psychology, even more to create really unique cross-disciplinary insights. To give a kind of personal example, my thesis focuses on how folklore and climactic variation can help us understand how certain kinds of cultural practices in economics can persist more than others. In terms of coursework, I was able not only to take upper division classes in philosophy and more at Harvard, but also in topics like urban planning at MIT, which actually led me to a really interesting collaborative project with researchers in that department, understanding over tourism in Venice, using historical maps and other novel research methods, like scraping reviews from TripAdvisor, using the colors from Google Street View to understand what kinds of areas have more and less tourist landmarks within the city. Harvard was really great about supporting this kind of interdisciplinary research, which combined economics, computer science, urban design, and history. So much so, not only was I able to count this as a course for credit for within a semester, I was able to receive some pretty substantial grant funding to travel to Venice and continue researching those problems in person. Though, of course, some of that wasn't able to happen uh, due to travel restrictions from the COVID pandemic. After graduation, many applied math students go on to work in industry, be it finance or other applied quantitative roles. 
Some, of course, go on to graduate programs in economics, statistics, computer science, and more. I myself originally planned to go on graduate school for economics, although I decided after the COVID pandemic to take a couple of years off before doing so. Other industry roles friends of mine have taken range from working on the economics of market-making startups like Uber or Wayfair or an insurance company to working in public policy roles in DC, of the data journals and branches of large newspapers like the Washington Post or the New York Times as opposed to economics, which might somewhat unfairly be associated with working in a more traditional finance world like investment banking, I think applied math is really flexible because you can apply it to pretty much anything. And so it appeals to a really wide range of potential employers. There's a lot of different jobs out there. In all, I think applied math at Harvard is a great way to pursue interdisciplinary social science research in a quantitative way and take you down a wide variety of different paths. Throughout my time here, I've met people studying applied math who work on research from improving accessibility devices for children, all the way to understanding why macroeconomic growth has slowed in Japan using some really interesting novel microeconomic data. If you're passionate about understanding how to solve interesting real world problems using data, I can't really recommend applied math, generally the economics department at Harvard enough. Well, truly to take you to really interesting and unexpected places. And I think it gives a great foundation for whatever it is that you want to pursue next.